Why is spending so easy and saving so hard? And more importantly, how do we flip that? Hi, I'm Matt Hearn, and I confess that I have never been to a buffet and not overeaten. Can you relate? The food is abundant and so tempting, and it's very easy to pile food onto my plate and into my mouth, and boy does it taste good. Every day, we are faced with a spending buffet. There is abundant temptation of things to buy and things to do that are constantly marketed to us. And with all of our money sloshing around to a single bank account, plus access to credit, it's so easy to indulge. And it feels good to buy things that are shiny and new because it may even get us admiration and praise from our friends. Now faced with this environment of abundant temptation and easy money, struggling to save is not a lack of willpower. It's not a character flaw. It's a design flaw in the systems that we've been using today to navigate that challenging environment. Let's dive deeper into this. Being financially healthy is challenging for the same reason that it's very difficult to be physically healthy. We're human. Therefore, we can look into human behavioral science for a guidance on how to make it easy to be good with money. Spending and saving are behaviors. Behaviors repeated become habits. In his book, Atomic Habits, James Clear describes the process of behaviors becoming habits as the habit loop. Cue, craving, response, and reward. Cues, which are also known as prompts or triggers, let us know that there's a reward nearby. If that reward is something that we know and like, then we'll be motivated to act and access that reward. And if we actually do enjoy that reward, then we're more likely that next time we notice the cue, to repeat that whole loop. And that's how behaviors and habits are formed. Now by applying James Clear's four laws for making and breaking habits, we can learn how to design a system that makes saving easy and spending hard. Cue and response relate often to our environment. So the first step is to design our environment for success. Craving and reward often relate to emotions. So the other key step is harness our emotions. So in designing our environment, the first step is to remove temptation as much as possible. To limit the response also makes it very difficult for the habit to, to form. So the next step is to restrict access to money as much as possible. The next step in there is to compartmentalize your accounts to between what is money that's already committed and money that's available for impulsive and under, unplanned indulgences. Also under response is then to automate. So automate the transfers between each of those compartments that you've created. Over here in craving, one way that we reduce the craving is by making the trade-offs visible. This means that we are much more aware of the consequences if we do engage in the action of overspending. Here in reward, the next key element is accountability. Make it, if you do unfortunately uh, have that impulsive purchase, the accountability makes it less satisfying. It doesn't feel as good, which means you're less likely to repeat it next time around. Also under accountability is we want to make making the right decisions good as well. So make saving fun. So the way we do that is by celebrating every great financial decision. Designing your system with these elements reduces your need to rely on willpower to make great financial decisions. For help implementing such a system and being great with money, visit matthearn.com.au.